the bread goes in. It's called a to toaster. Now we still have to work out what you're going to eat. <laughs> Um, the program here, it, it serves to support children who are deaf or hard of hearing who, for whatever reason, have been unable to be successful in their home school district. It might be because their hearing loss is so significant they're unable to access the curriculum um, in the home school. It could be because they have additional disabilities. It could be a myriad of reasons, just depending. The school was great about putting in um, supportive services for her. From elementary school, she had a full-time sign language interpreter and she had um, FM equipment and lots of supports. But as she was moving through middle school and then making the transition into high school, it became more and more difficult for her. By freshman year in high school, she didn't want to go anymore. Um, and really became unable to go. From the minute Tanea and I walked into the room, she just was so comfortable. She went from a student who didn't want to go to school, who was anxious and sad and lonely, to a, a student who fit in and made connections with people almost immediately. And it was just really wonderful for her. Being, first of all, among peers who also are deaf or hard of hearing has been an amazing uh, benefit to her. Integration is a wonderful thing, but not if it creates isolation. You need true integration, which is lots of different people coming together. And that's what this program has done for her. It's based here in Salve, so she's out and about interacting with all kinds of students, but she has her the support of peers here in this program to balance that out, and she's not always alone. Would you please talk to me? So it's 2 minus 2. All right, I like it. 10th place. It's minus 7. Is it bigger on top or bigger on bottom? Equals. Well, let's see, we get a graded number. Options. If you want to say what I did, I said I multiplied 5, 6 times 3 over 3. You could write it down in the lines. It might get a little tricky, but you could do that.
biggest benefits of our program are things like small class size. Uh, we have specialized instruction with teachers of the deaf. We have a continuum of services available, which is kind of nice. For example, if we aren't sure where we want to put a student, whether maybe they should go to a math class in the general education setting versus having them in a self-contained setting with a teacher of the deaf, we have the flexibility to be able to, even on short notice, change things up. Perhaps they're doing very well. We want to give them more of a challenge or if they're being overly challenged, we can also back it up a little bit so we have all that flexibility. The other wonderful thing I think about our program is the fact that we are included in the Salve School District and so therefore they have access to the whole general ed curriculum and because it's a relatively small school district, all of the staff here are familiar with children who have hearing loss. Kids can walk around and feel comfortable that if they're wearing hearing aids or cochlear implant processors or they're wearing their hearing assistance technology in the classroom, it's no big deal. We have had children who in their homeschool districts refuse to wear their hearing aids, who have come here and are picking ear molds that are their bright favorite colors because they no longer feel inhibited. They really feel like, yeah, there are other people like me. So I think one of the best parts about having the Deaf and Hard of Hearing program here at the middle school in particular is our students are still so interested in learning. They're excited about learning. And so when they have a deaf student or a hard of hearing student in their classroom, not only are they learning the curriculum, but they're watching those students and watching how they can best interact with those students and have them a part of their class. They see those kids as just a part of our day and they participate with our students in every facet. They're in the school play. They're out on the sports teams. They are just an integral part of our, our district and our building and I think our kids are lucky for having that as part of their life for the 12 years that they're at Salve. I'm Caden's speech-language pathologist. I've been working with him since last September when he joined the program. And when he came to us, he knew a little bit of sign language. He was in a preschool where um, he was the only deaf child using sign language. And he didn't really have a clear way to communicate. He didn't understand people so very, very quickly when he joined our program he started to learn sign language with our um, total communication program that we have here where we sign and talk uh, to everybody and all the staff and all the kids do um, and as what happened over time is a lot of his frustrations with not being able to communicate his wants and needs and not understanding others really decreased and he was able he was able to really be happy. Um, in addition, he's able to learn at this point because when you don't understand things, it's really hard to learn. So he's made tremendous gains, and he's even starting to read. So that's really exciting for Katie. Very, I'm very hopeful about him being here. He's. Um, He's happy, and that's important. So, and I think this program did that for him. Oh, I gotcha. Graydon, what's one plus two plus one? So, Graydon, are we right? Yes. 299, 299, 170, 470, 469. Every student who is hard of hearing or deaf should have an opportunity this wonderful.